All right. Thank you for taking the time to walk through this presentation. Let me tell you what we'll be going over in the next few minutes. What makes mobile app development successful? We've done some market research. And we can share that with you. Why testing mobile apps is different and hard than web applications. And finally, how speed and quality can impress your boss and make you a badass at work. That's the key here. So let me tell you a little bit about who will be presenting and about our company. Kobiton is a cloud-based mobile device lab and SaaS platform that supports mobile device labs. I'm the CEO, Kevin Lee. Presenting with me today will also be our CTO, Frank Moyer. We are based in Atlanta with offices also in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. We are supported and accelerated out of a tech accelerator that also created two companies in the testing space you may know, QA Symphony and Catalan. First, we're going to take a real quick quiz, see how everyone is uh, up to speed on their mobile application learnings. Uh, first, number of hours per day the average adult spends on their mobile phone globally. 3.25, 4.1, The answer is 4.1 hours a day is the average adult spending on their phone. Next, what's the percentage of cell phone owners that check their phone before they even get out of bed? I'm in this group, 51% check their mobile phone before their feet even hit the floor in the morning. Next, a slow loading mobile application has the psychological impact similar to a near miss car collision, losing a $10 bet, or viewing a horror movie. If you guess viewing a horror movie, you're right, and that is psychologically proven. Percentage of people that say they often use their phone while in the restroom. Well, I'm here to tell you 94% of the people say they use their phone in the restroom, and 6% of the people in the world lie about it. Okay. Accordingly, what percentage of people have dropped their phone in a toilet? 23%, 32%, or 43%? 23% have dropped their phone in a toilet. Also, the percentage of emails open on a mobile device. This is last year. I was surprised to know that over half, 56% of mobile devices, of emails are opened on mobile devices. How many apps does the average enterprise have in pre-release development at any point in time? 6.2. 6.2 mobile apps are in pre-release development at any point in time across an enterprise. Further shows you everything's moving to a mobile app. The amount of mobile device time spent on a mobile app, not a mobile browser. So where do people spend most of their time on a mobile device. 89% of that time is actually spent on a mobile app versus a mobile browser. How many downloads, mobile app downloads in 2017? We know it's hundreds of billions, but how many hundreds of billions? If you guessed 254 billion, you're right. And I think this is the final one. What's the number two most frequently used operating system in the world, including desktops, in 2017? So what's the number two operating system? Windows, iOS, or Android? This one surprised me. The number two is Windows because in 2017, the number one most frequently used operating system across the world was Android. All right, so let's get into the heart of the presentation. Here's what we know and have learned about mobile app development in the past years. Really, there's two truths. One is frequent app updates result in greater user engagement. We know even if it is just changing the look of the icon on the mobile app, it can drive greater usage and engagement. Obviously, adding feature functionality and fixing bugs does that same thing, but more app updates create greater user, user engagement. Those that rank highest in the app stores 
typically release, on average, one release a week. Next thing is bugs and user interface issues are most common drivers of abandonment. 24% of users abandon a mobile app on its first use, and the most common reason that is given is because it didn't work correctly or it didn't look right on my mobile device. So those are two things we've learned after all these years of, of mobile app development. So why is mobile app development tough? Part of the challenge is the conventional web app tools that are out there in the market can't solve the problem of mobile apps. The reasons are, in the, in the web world, you can virtualize servers, virtualize instances of browsers, so I can create hundreds if not thousands of instances of servers and browsers that I can test against to, to try all different type of test case scenarios that my users may experience. In mobile world, you can't virtualize real devices. We know that simulators and emulators work to some extent, but that's probably gotten us to the point where we're getting 24% abandonment on first use. If you really want to see how it's going to work, we need to try these things, test them on real mobile devices that can't be virtualized. Next is, if I do want to test on real mobile devices, there's about 45,000 different combinations of devices and operating systems in the world active today. And that's up from 15,000 in 2011. It continues to increase on about an 8% basis every year. So getting hold of those devices is costly either in time and or dollars. Next is proprietary app distribution models govern the speed to the market. So even if you can get your app developed and tested quickly, you still have to go through an approval process through the App Store or with Google or whatever distribution model you may be using. So that really governs our speed to market. Thank you, Kevin, for the introduction. And thank you all for attending. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk through some of the capabilities that have emerged over the past couple of years that have enabled more rapid delivery of mobile applications. But before I get started, I'd like to learn a little bit about the audience and uh, the organizations that you work for. So by a raise of hands, who currently works in mobile app development or testing? So testing apps, mobile apps. Okay, so that's about uh, about half, a little bit more than half the audience here. Audience size is about 120. Of those 60 some odd people who raised their hands for this group, between the time that your code is checked in to when it is live in your user's hands on a mobile device, you know, the in entire build process, testing process, approval process in the app stores, how long does that take? And by a raise of those, those people who rose, raised their hands earlier, how many does it take more than seven days to go through that process? Okay, so I would say about 70%. Um, uh, more than three days. Okay, substantially less, uh, about five or six there. Um, more than a day, okay, we, nobody, nobody additional there. Um, less than a day. Ah, we've got, there's one person who is at less than a day. Hey, would you like to come up and uh, teach and present instead of me? Um, so anyway, thank you. Um, so today I'm going to talk through an organization that we've worked with to help get the delivery timeline through a combination of, uh, of tooling and Kobiton, as Kevin explained a little bit about what Kobiton does. And we were able to reduce the time between code check-in to live deployments um, from th about three days to less than an hour. And to reduce the DevOps effort from 13 hours to um, every, uh, they did a release every two weeks. We went from 13 hours every two weeks to uh, less than an hour of their time through a lot of automation and a lot of uh, effective tooling. So, so I'm going to talk about the process they went through um, 
and what it looks like, what the process looks like when we were done. Um, and then I'm gonna give you a demonstration, uh, a video demonstration of the end result. So this is, when we walked into the client, this was the traditional way that they were uh, building their code, testing it and deploying it to live environments. This flow will probably be familiar to those of you who have worked in mobile app development because they developed this flow about four years ago and that was the common way to do it at that time. Starting with a piece of code at the bottom left corner and they're trying to get it all the way to the right hand side so that it's the app that they are, are adding code to is being used with these changes within as, as quickly as possible by their users. So the first thing that they did, they would check it into GitHub. Um, after it was checked in, they had a developer, one of their developers would pull, do a git pull to extract, to pull that code down locally. They would then go through a process of building that code locally. And once it was built, that developer would uh, kick off a set of uh, a set of tests using emulators and simulators and some real devices, but a lot of that was done manually. Uh, they had some Appium scripts, about you know thirty percent coverage from their Appium scripts, and that process itself took about um, a day and a half to two days. Um, I said when I started that we had taken it from three days down to just under an hour, but when things went wrong, right, when the, there was a problem with the code, um, we went from, oh, excuse me, sorry about that. It would go from three days to over a week because there was, it, at this point, you needed to create your bug report um, in JIRA, they were logging it manually to JIRA. And when they logged it manually to JIRA, they were typing in the steps to reproduce. They would send a notification to using JIRA to the developer who had pushed the code, uh, who was accountable for that. And then the developer would loop back through the whole process. And this would iterate through until they had a successful set of test executions. Again, this, on the best case, took three days, and worst case, over, over, over a week. Uh, once that had been, once that was finished, the next step was this daunting task of getting it from their development environment into the live, uh, the, the live devices from their users. And uh, they would submit it to the App Store, the Google Play Store, for the approval process. And, you know, we all know how scary that can be if um, you, you potentially are going to get rejected through that approval process. Uh, it's gotten a lot better over the years, but it still caused a lot of anxiety uh, on how to deploy and, and get approval. We've all heard the story of a, a large Atlanta bank that had um, a, a mission critical application for their users that had a, they did a deploy the login function was broken, so users could not log in to their banking application. Caused a tremendous amount of frustration. It took four days for them to get approval from the App Store to fix the issue. And during that time, they had hundreds of reviews slamming their application. So this whole process, you know, the, the other thing that I'd like to mention about this is the, they had releases every two weeks. The actual release process was about three days. Um, so the, all of the changes were bundled together over the course of about a week and a half when they went through this process. Um, so keep that in mind as I go through the, the next step. Over the past couple of years, the landscape has changed tremendously. There's been 
a lot of advances in uh, technical capabilities predominantly to solve this problem of taking days and weeks to get uh, changes to your application deployed to production. Uh, the likes of Ionic, React Native, Xamarin, and then on the deployment side, Fastlane, Expo IDE, and Code Push by Microsoft have all been very uh, effective ways to change these weeks to hours. And I'll explain how we applied these. So I have a question before I go on to the next um, step. What was what was the process that uh, the person who's raised his hand? Actually, I'm going to ask that after I go through this because I want to know what uh, tools you use to get to under a day. So the process we helped our our customer with in getting from in getting from days to minutes was you know, first starts with the same process of checking into GitHub. Around this is a um, and I'll show this later is a pipeline, a continuous integration and deployment pipeline using Jenkins. So once the code was checked in to GitHub, a trigger would be fired that would s automate a build process. Um, bef as, as part of that, unit tests were executed. We used SonarCube to val do code verification. We used some, some additional coverage tools to verify that the minimum coverage was achieved. And only after all of that was successful would we load in the IPA or the APK files uh, to Kobiton in order to execute on real devices. And I'm going to show you the output from that execution at the at the end of this so you get an idea of what the what your the the testers and the developers are able to see if there is an error so you know the same process if there is an error we have an automated uh, way to write to jira but only if there are failures uh, slack messages are are sent out on, automatically to the team to notify them of a failure and then it's, it's fixed and checked back in, the pipeline starts again. This whole pipeline, because of the automation and because they're using real devices, they were able to reduce their risk and reduce their, their testing timeline substantially. Um, and then finally, we're using uh, code push and test flight to actually bypass the uh, deployment of going through the store approval process. That, that's not always possible, but it is, um, you know, we've seen it about 90% of the time, we can actually bypass that, uh, that approval process by using tools like Code Push. So the time between going, checking your code in to GitHub, going through this pipeline and testing on real devices has gone from days to literally to minutes. And I'm gonna talk about, um, the uh, I mentioned I'm sorry I mentioned that Jenkins wraps this whole whole um, pipeline, and there are a lot of tools out there. But before I go on to the next step, I'm going to um, demonstrate and explain some of the tooling that we use to achieve this. So this is the the actual uh, video of our pipeline. The developer right here is making a um, they're checking in the code. They are adding a release, so they're bumping up the release from release 154 to 155, and they're committing that change. So this is pushing the change to GitHub. Once that uh, is pushed, you can see the Jenkins pipeline right here that has not kicked off. It's showing the previous one. And you can see these five steps. These are the, the main steps that I just talked about earlier. What that allows is, oh, you can see it just kicked off right there. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a question from the audience. Right, 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 right. So the, the, question, uh, the question was, how do we actually get 
the, the deployment on, into the user's hand. So um, we use a combination of test flight and code push to accomplish that. Uh, that was, um, there are a few different tools that I'm gonna go through in a few minutes that talk about the different ways to, uh, to achieve that. But uh, it's, there, are, there are tools like Hockey App um, and, uh, and a few others that I can explain. So here's, um, but thank you for the question. So here's the actual build. Uh, it's running through the, the pipeline script. Um, you can see that it's doing um, scans. And uh, at this point, it's deploying the code to Kobiton. And here you can see on the right-hand side uh, where you've, this is the Kobiton interface to what's happening. And we've got 26 sessions that have run up to this point and uh, by refresh you can see that it's now up to 27 uh, that means another test had executed and and passed um, so that's the feedback the user gets from executing these tests um, i'll give you some a, a demo at the end of this but you can also see uh, the actual build results that this just finished uh, successfully it took um, you know, about five minutes. And the, te the time to actually get this working depends on how long does it take to build. You know, that's one bottleneck in the, the timeline. And the second is how long does it take to run your automated tests? Um, you know, if you, you can run parallel, you can run against multiple devices at the same time, uh, you can have a beefy machine to do your builds, you can get that down you know, to a very, very, uh, very fast time. We're talking minutes, not hours or days. Um, so this shows that the build was deployed to iTunes Connect. That was build 155 down here. And you see that it was done successfully. So it's starting to be used in the user's hands, all in front of our eyes. The final thing that I, I wanted to demo was the output and what you're able to pull from the live execution that we just did in the automated automated tests. So this is the Kobiton interface after the test is executed and you can see all the sessions that were, were run. Um, this one that ran at was the uh, test that was executed at 1215. So when I pull this up this shows the actual a lot of really uh, good information here. It gives me the session name um, the manufacturer, the resolution, the fact that it was um, completed. And then it also gives all of the actions that were performed um, with the associated screenshots when that action was performed. So you can see that this uh, product is called Wingman and it shows, if I click along all these actions that were performed, it shows the typing in of the um, one-time passcode SMS number. And you can see what the screen looked like in that resolution. You can also download the screenshot if you're interested in, in pulling that into something like JIRA. Um, you can also uh, run the video. So this is, um, this is a video of those transactions uh, of, of the entire test automation script. So you can see that it kicks off the app. Um, the app is loading, there's an animation there. It um, gets to a few options, get started or I already have an account. They click on I already have an account. Then they start to type in the mobile number to get an SMS one-time passcode. Um, once that's done, the message is sent with a passcode. The user can enter that in and then get confirmed, or in this case, it was an invalid code. So that'll give you uh, a lot of information there. You can also, oh, by the way, you can also download that movie right here. And finally, um, on the, you get the live logs the, of what happened in that session. So you can see the actual machine starting up, and this is helpful for developers in troubleshooting errors that are spit out by the, um, the application and the device. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the Kobiton product and how it fits in 
uh, to this CICD pipeline. Now, what this gives the organizations that are able to adopt a, a faster deployment pipeline is obviously faster to market. As Kevin mentioned earlier, um, the, the applications that have frequent changes are more widely used than those that don't. Um, so the ability to only uh, slow down the process when there are problems with testing uh, or um, an issue with the automation scripts, that's one issue. Um, it also faster because you don't have to go through the approval process. Um, with this alternate process that we talked about, we're able to use, uh, the, so the code was built using React Native. Um, we were using Jenkins to do the automation pipeline. Um, we used Kobiton for the test execution, and we used Code Push and Test Flight to deploy the apps to live environment. Um, every time a developer would check in and merge with the master branch of GitHub, on GitHub, they, it would go through this process and give the users, uh, give the, I'm sorry, give the organization a deployable product. So at that point, if they wanted to deploy, they could. Um, the second, point here is that if you bundle 10 requests together and you want to deploy that, that could be deployed as well. The other thing that you get is streamlining communication between the testers, the developers, and the re release managers. The prior process was very um, email focused and they used uh, Skype to communicate with each other around issues. Um, this really streamlined that, that communication. And there's a tremendous amount of um, risk that is reduced is uh, reduced because you're not introducing these major changes once every two weeks. You've got incremental changes every, you know, they, were, they got to twice a day where they were merging with their master branch and, and going through this process. Um, and then there's also flexibility on how the mobile app is released. Uh, they can do it just a subset of users, do like a canary test with a subset of users and then deploy it once they feel comfortable with, a, with um, what's been released. But you know, this new speed comes at a cost uh, as it's an imperative with the speed at which you are, we are now able to integrate and deploy mobile apps. The automated tests are, are essential. Um, you know, you just cannot do manual tests twice a day um, because each of those, each time they were running these manual tests would take a couple of days. So that's an investment to get that working. The second investment is actually in the build and deploy pipeline. Now I'm gonna give you the code um, at the end of this for this pipeline so you get a sense of, um, you, you can actually use this code and build it into your product. Uh, it's an MIT license, so it's, it's free to use. Um, and then finally, you know, the, the testing on real devices is essential because you know, the, the speed at which you're deploying, if you have 25% of your users that are um, ha have a bug because you aren't testing on real devices, uh, that's going to um, not be caught and cause uh, a reduction in, in app engagement. So this, um, you know, I, I talked about the green line items here are what we used for this, uh, this flow. Um, we used for orchestration Jenkins. We scripted the tests in Appium. We used Code Push to release it, and it was coded in React Native. But as you can see, there are a lot of options on each of these. If there's um, commercial products like Team City uh, in in the Jira community, Bamboo is a very popular one. Uh, there are a lot of different scripting languages you can do, use depending on your, uh, your, your developers or your automation scripters capabilities. And then there are a lot of different ways you can actually release the app to production. Um, and 
in the, the coding structure, you know, we use React Native, but there are others like Xamarin that uh, do uh, provide a lot of the same support that we use. So we're going to be continuing to build out a lot of these integrations so that uh, you know our community can help uh, can more rapidly pick up these um, these capabilities and uh, and run on Kobiton. Here is the URL uh, for the open source code that's um, on GitHub. So uh, feel free to pull this and fork it, whatever you'd like to do to um, play around with the, our source code. So I'm um, now uh, back to Kevin. Thank you very much.